In 2021, Triumph have thrown their hat into the middleweight naked sport bike ring with the new Trident 660. It boasts a versatile triple cylinder engine, playful handling, and a comprehensive electronics package, all for a competitive price of just over 8,000 US dollars. But those are just the broad strokes. In this video, I'll break down all the other little technical details that you might want to know about the Trident before you ride yours home. We'll start at the front and work backwards. The Trident comes equipped with Michelin Road 5 tires. This is a dual compound sport touring tire with a hard, long-lasting centerline, good rain siping, and a soft, sporty outside edge. They're both mounted to 17-inch cast aluminum wheels. The front brake is a 310 millimeter dual disc setup with axially mounted two-pot Nissan calipers. Like all Triumphs, the Trident 660 comes standard with anti-lock brakes. On this model, they are not switchable. The front forks are a 41 millimeter inverted Showa unit, tuned a bit more on the sporty side. This is a separate function fork setup with damping performed in just one of the tubes. They are not manually adjustable. Every light fixture on the Trident is an LED, from its single, round headlight right down to the license plate illuminator. The high beam is controlled by this trigger rather than a traditional on-off switch. Unlike most other high beam controls of this type, it acts as a toggle rather than a momentary on. The bar and mirrors seen on the Trident in this video are a Triumph genuine accessory. The only other option fitted to this bike is the My Triumph Bluetooth connectivity module. More on that in a minute. Moving along the handlebar, we have an adjustable front brake lever, but a non-adjustable clutch lever. The left-hand switchgear features the D-pad and select button used to navigate the dashboard menu, as well as a dedicated button for switching between riding modes, which can be done on the fly. The Trident only has two modes, Road and Rain, with the latter featuring a more intrusive traction control setting and a dulled throttle response. In both modes, traction control can be switched off entirely. The Trident does not feature cornering ABS or any sort of IMU. The bike has a single round central dash with two integrated TFT displays flanked by the standard array of warning lights. The upper TFT display is semicircular and contains the tachometer, fuel gauge, gear position indicator, and speedometer. Aside from the option to switch between miles and kilometers per hour, the upper display is not configurable. The lower display is an entirely different story. This is where you can cycle through various trays of information and navigate the settings and configuration menus and manage the many functions of the My Triumph Bluetooth connectivity module. Those trays, as Triumph call them, are things like your clock, odometers, current and average fuel consumption, cool and temperature, and so on. There is a tray that shows your gear position. When this one is active, the smaller gear position indicator in the upper TFT display disappears. You flip through the trays using the D-pad on the left-hand switch gear. In the settings menu, you can pick and choose which trays will and won't be available for you to cycle through while riding. Beyond just toggling trays, the level of configurability in the settings menu is seemingly endless. Choose your language, your time and date format, your units for temperature, speed, distance, fuel consumption, tire pressure if you have the optional TPMS. You can choose the RPM at which your Trident tells you to upshift. You can even tell your Trident what your name is so that the dashboard will personally greet you every time you power it on. The Trident also has self-canceling turn signals and they too have multiple settings that can be configured in the menu. They can self-cancel after a certain distance traveled or time elapsed and you can also set them to flash just three times with a short press of the turn signal switch and stay on with a long press. They can also function manually if that's what you prefer. All of that configuration is before we even touch the My Triumph Bluetooth connectivity module, an option present on this particular Trident. This allows you to pair a variety of devices to your motorcycle and control them from the switch gear. You can run navigation, music, take phone calls, view text notifications, control your GoPro, control your intercom unit, the list goes on. Many of the functions of those devices can be added to your array of active trays in the lower TFT display. Moving on from the dash and onboard computer, we have the standard Triumph key arrangement. The steering lock is activated by pushing in once, then turning to the left. The key itself is RFID coded for each individual bike's immobilizer, making it more difficult for a thief to hotwire the bike. 
Your dealer will provide you with a four-digit code that you can use to order coded copies of your key from Triumph. The Trident has a 3.7-gallon fuel tank and can safely run on regular gas. Miles per gallon is supposedly somewhere in the mid-50s, meaning you could theoretically squeeze close to 200 miles out of a tank if you're mostly just cruising. The gas cap is hinged, standard fare for a modern sport bike, but a luxury to those of us used to riding classics. Below the tank sits the Trident's standout feature, a 660cc dual overhead cam inline triple cylinder engine. At this time, the Trident is the only triple cylinder motorcycle in this displacement class, offering a unique balance between the low end grunt of a twin cylinder and the high revving power of a four cylinder. It makes a claimed 80 horsepower at 10,250 RPM and 47 foot pounds of torque at 6,250 RPM. Moving that power along is a six speed transmission with a slip assist clutch. The Trident is of course Euro 5 emissions compliant with a big catalytic converter tucked away under its tubular steel frame. Because of the design of the exhaust, slip-ons are not really an option. If you want to uncork your Trident, you'll have to go with a full aftermarket system. If you can't do a full system upgrade due to the expense or your local laws, don't worry. This bike still sounds pretty good in stock form. Take a listen. The Trident's riding posture is just a little bit sporty, but it should still be all day comfortable for all but the lankiest of riders. The seat height is 31.7 inches, and a rider who is 5 foot 8 with a 30 inch inseam is able to get the balls of both feet down. Shorter riders should still find it manageable thanks to the Trident's low wet weight of 417 pounds. The seat itself is fairly cushy for both the rider and pillion. You won't find a proper toolkit underneath though, probably because it wouldn't fit. The rear suspension, another Showa component, is a pretty basic monoshock. It is adjustable for preload. The rear brake is a single piston Nissan caliper on a 255mm disc. At the stern is a swing arm mounted mudguard, which is home to the license plate and rear turn signals. This design keeps the tail nice and clean without the need for an aftermarket tail tidy. All that's up there is a single combination tail light and brake light with a little Triumph logo at the tip. You do get a painted accent under the tail depending on your bike's color option. The Trident comes in four color combinations, crystal white, sapphire black, matte black slash silver ice, and silver ice slash Diablo red seen on the Trident in this video. The Trident's base MSRP is 8,095 US dollars, but if you opt for the matte black silver ice or the silver ice Diablo red, you'll pay an extra $125. Triumph offers plenty of other ways to increase the price of your Trident in the form of Triumph Genuine Accessories. In addition to the usual engine guards and visual farkles, you can spec a tire pressure monitoring system, a quick shifter, and the aforementioned My Triumph Bluetooth module. At this time, Triumph do not offer a center stand or cruise control for the Trident. Like most motorcycles, the Trident will require a break-in oil change at the 600 mile mark, but after that, the manual only calls for oil changes every 10,000 miles or 12 months, and valve inspections every 20,000 miles. Those intervals contribute to what should be a relatively trouble-free ownership experience. So, are there any other details you're dying to know about the Triumph Trident that I didn't cover in this video? If so, ask me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up. That will let me know that people want to see more of this informational type content in addition to my usual moto adventure vlogs. I'll ride and review any motorcycle I can get my hands on, so if you want to see your bike featured on this channel and live within a few days ride of Washington DC, hit me up on Instagram or by email. Lastly, if you want to see those videos if and when they happen, then make sure you're subscribed to the Van Blam YouTube channel. Everybody ride safe, and I'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching.